Good morning, Suburban. My name is Sebi. I'm one of the interns here at church. And it's great to be with you on another Wednesday morning, as it's my privilege to bring to you the Word of God once again. Or maybe you've got a moment to spare with a cup of coffee or tea. You know, feel free to make yourselves comfortable this morning. Uh, the sun's coming out again as well this time of year, and restrictions are easing. So perhaps you've been enjoying the outside with your friends and your family. You know, I've actually got my window open right here. Um, and the sunlight is coming in, so hopefully you too can experience it with me. Speaking of light, though, today I'd like to bring forward this uh, passage from Luke. Uh, it's a few verses where Jesus talks about light. And it's in Luke chapter 11, and we'll be reading from verses uh, 33 to 36. Let me read it out to you, actually. Jesus says this in Luke 11, 33 to 36. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, so that those who may enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. Now, these words are quite mysterious and deep when we first read them. Or maybe they're just plain confusing to you when we see that Jesus is really talking about lamps and eyes and our body. Now, this kind of language isn't the sort that we'd use every day, but somehow Jesus manages to, to bring together the relationship between light and our eyes, and our body. Now, it's really important to understand where Jesus is coming from when he's talking about these things. Now, today, we use these to give off light. However, it was quite different in Jesus' day over 2,000 years ago. You know, they didn't have light bulbs. Uh, but lamps in those days were made from clay, and they contained olive oil and a wick to light. So when they were lit, they usually gave off only a small amount of light, unlike the modern-day torch or light bulb. You know, it, it was actually more like candlelight. <clears throat> and so you would actually have to put the lamp in the middle of the room in order for its light to reach into the corners. So just as Jesus says in verse 33, no one sensible would place a lamp in a hidden place, but on a stand so you could use it for your own benefit. Now, why does Jesus talking about lamps and light here. Well, he's actually comparing himself and his teaching to the light of a lamp. That light is the light of the gospel, the good news that though we're full of sin and unrighteousness, God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die, that he might take the punishment in our place and grant us righteousness. So when the gospel is presented before us, Jesus is saying it's as if God is offering to us a lighted candle. And like the light of a lamp, it isn't meant to be concealed, but to be made available for all to see. In fact, it's more than just candlelight to be admired, but that it must be received into our hearts and obeyed in our lives. And anything else that is not the gospel is in fact not light at all, but darkness. And so we must place the light of the gospel in the very center of our lives so that it can reach all the corners of our hearts. Jesus goes on. The next verse, we see that not only does the light have to be lit and put on a stand, but it has to be received by the eye. So verse 34, Jesus says, The eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your body is your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. In other words, Jesus is saying, if your eye sees me for who I am, then you will be full of light. But if you don't see me for who I am, then you're full of darkness. The most brilliant light 
that has ever been invented is no use at all if our eyes are not working. But the light of the sun shining on my face might as well not exist if I had bad eyes. Our spiritual lives work in the same way because if our spiritual eyes are open to Christ and what he has done, then our whole body will be filled with his light. But while there was a message of hope here, it contained notes of a warning. We read on, Jesus continues and says, Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. Imagine an entire lifetime full of darkness, having never discovered the light. There's so many things in this world today that just darken our, our, our eyes and take us away from the light of Christ. Uh, we might be blinded by our own pride, our hearts, and our hearts might be hardened to what Christ has done for us on the cross. Perhaps our eyes are covered by idolatry where the things that we should love last become what we love first. Or it could be even simpler and deadlier in that what darkens our eyes is our love for sin. The great Charles Spurgeon calls this love for sin the great cataract which darkens the mental eye. The desires of our hearts just so easily take us away from what we were made to see. But Christ's wonderful light brightens our way forward. Some of you might have heard of the Christian evangelist named George Muller. Uh, I'd just like to share with you a little bit about him this morning. So, for the first 20 years of his life, he had no time for God, but plenty of time for drinking and gambling and women. He was a swindler, and at 16 years old, he was tried for fraud, found guilty, and then sent to prison. He came out and his health was suffering from his life of debauchery. He was unhappy, but he still kept God out of his life. He had a personal library of 300 books, but there was no Bible on his shelves. Muller's life was just full of darkness and despair. The great change, however, took place in 1825 when a friend told of told him of a meeting in a house, and Muller felt as if he wanted to go there. It began with a man praying for God's blessing on them, and then the Bible was read and expounded, and as the gospel entered his mind, Muller's whole life changed. We could say that then his eyes became good, and his whole life was full of the light of Jesus Christ from that point onwards. Now, Muller lived, lived until he was the ripe old age of 93, and one of his lasting legacies was his cluster of large homes in Bristol, where hundreds of orphans were taken in and provided for as Muller, day by day, spread out their needs before God. Now, George Muller's life had been filled with the light of Christ, and he himself became like a lamp unto others, as Jesus says. You know, in verse 36, he says, If your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. As believers, the rays of Christ which enters and fill us turn into rays of light which shine outward unto those around us. Now, we begin to reflect that light all around. As we receive it, we respond to it by the ongoing transformation of our lives as we become less like our sin and more like who Christ is. And so the light of the gospel is supposed to enter us through good eyes and illuminate our bodies by placing it at the center of our lives, which leads us to for reflecting Christ unto those around us. Jesus 
is the light that we are meant to see. His light, as it fills us, will give us life and meaning to every part of our lives. And so, as we close our time together, I wonder if the light of the gospel is in your life. Or is it in a hidden place? You know, are your eyes good? Or do you find that it might be difficult to accept accept, that, accept Christ into your hearts? Now, the best way to make our eyes good is to simply go to God and ask Him in prayer. In fact, let me pray for you right now. Let's bow our heads. O oh Lord, open the eyes of our hearts. Help us to see you for who you truly are. Help us to see your wisdom and your power over our lives, to see the light of the gospel. Father, I pray that you would make our eyes good, that you would heal our blindness, so that we may be filled with your all-purifying light. Let our hearts be whole as we walk with you. Give us inward peace and outward usefulness as we reflect the light of your Son, Jesus. Father, I thank you for your love and your grace that we experience day by day. Lord, be with us as we go about our week. Help us to shine your light. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you have any questions or are struggling, please feel free to contact or contact us, to email us, to, to give us a call. We'd love to pray for you um, and help in any way that we can. The contact details for the church will be in the description below. Um, make sure you join us for our Sunday service as well, which starts at 10 a.m. Uh, but yeah, have a good week. God be with you.